We're going to go ahead and take some of the information that we've been covering this week and we're going to build out a little bit more of a robust page. So here I am in CodePen. I'm going to go ahead and just make a new pen and I will name this. I'm just going to make a little web page about eels. So we're just going to call this eels. And once again, I'm just going to minimize my JavaScript and CSS pane since we're not using those right now. And we'll begin by writing some HTML. So when you build out a web page, it's important that you think about the hierarchy of the page. What are the types of elements that you want to display in the page? How important are they? What do you want to draw your user's attention to first? What do you want them to see second, etc. And when we're just using HTML, we can basically do that by using our heading tags and the paragraphs and whatnot. So think about if you were creating some sort of Word document or a Google document, you would need to go ahead and you would need to create a hierarchy on the page. So you'd have the title of the page, you might have a subheading, things like that. So that's what we're doing here. We start off with the H1 because that is our largest heading that we can use by default. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a subheading. And I'm going to do that by using my H2 tag. Sometimes it might be worth it for you just to make the opening and closing tag right away and then go back and fill in the content. If you start to create longer blocks of code, sometimes it's easier if you just make the closing tag right away so you don't forget to do it. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a paragraph. And I think I'll just give a little bit more real estate to my HTML pane so that I can see what I'm doing. And once again, I'll create the closing tag. And then I'm going to go ahead and write some text in here. And we'll go ahead and add another paragraph. And then I'm going to make an H3 tag. And we'll add some facts about eels. And I will list the facts as a list. So I'm going to create an unordered list by using an UL tag. You can create an ordered list, which is a numbered list, by using an OL tag. A UL tag is going to give you a list with bullets. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll create list items. Those are going to be the unique bulleted items that we'll be using. So let's just add some eel facts in here. And you can see that every time I make a list item, I get a bulleted list. It is worth noting that CodePen is letting me know that I haven't saved. So it is kind of keeping track of everything, but it probably is always a good idea to save every so often so you don't lose your work. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And since I've already named my pen, I don't need to name it. Sometimes when you save in CodePen, your windows might like kind of go back to the default settings. So I will just grab this and pull to the right to be able to add a little bit more space to my HTML. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a horizontal rule, which is one of our self closing or empty tags. This is going to just add a separator line. And as you can tell, this empty tag does not wrap around any content. All of the other tags that I've used so far kind of wrap around content, but this is one of our empty tags. So we'll go ahead and incorporate that in there as well. And you can just use horizontal rules to break up the page, to separate different sections on the page. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use one of my inline tags to make this word Elver, and I'm going to make this actually bold and italic. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to nest two of our inline tags. I'm going to use the strong tag and then I'll use the M tag. And then to close it, remember we have to do our first in last out. So I'll close the M tag first, and then I'll go ahead and close the strong tag. And now you can see that the word Elver is both bold and italic. And I'm going to add one more h2 tag. Okay, so I'm going to put a paragraph here, but I also want to create a link that goes out to an article 
about the difference between the electric and the true eel. So I'm going to go ahead and say the name of the website, which is oceanconservancy.org. And we want this to actually be a link. So what I'm going to do is we're going to wrap this text inside of an anchor tag or an A tag. So an A tag is a little bit different than all of the other tags that we've used so far because it's going to require that we add something called an attribute. Attributes are additional bits of information or values that we can add to elements so that we can adjust their behavior in specific ways. And I will talk more about attributes later, but because anchor tags have to have an attribute, I wanted to explain it to you. We will always put the attribute inside of the opening and closing angle brackets, and the attribute name is going to be followed by an equal sign, and then we need to put the value. The value is always wrapped inside of quotation marks. So the value for this link is actually fairly long. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in and notice that the value is quoted. And then I will close my angle bracket. And what's going to happen is all of the text that I write is going to be a link. Even if I, let's just say I make a new paragraph right here. You can see that thanks for learning about eels is a link as well. And that's because we didn't close our A tag. So it's really important, just like all of the other tags that we're learning about, that when you have a tag that requires a closing portion that you close it, or the behavior of your tag may not function as you want it to. So needless to say, here is the link. And now if I go ahead and click on this link, you'll see that the tab is going to be replaced by the link to this article about eels. Now I'm going to click my back button, which takes me back to the actual web page that we were working on before, and I'm going to hit save again. And now I've built a website that contains some of our basic HTML elements, and we have learned about a new element.